Hey everybody, welcome to this video. We're going to talk all about digital signage for churches and we're using it in my church. I love it. It's a great solution and there's a few solutions out there, but none like the one we're going to talk about today. And my friend Michael Bird is the one behind that. So Michael, welcome. How you doing? Hey, good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Before we start talking about digital signage for churches and really other use cases for it, curriculum and rooms, I mean, just a lot of ways that churches can use it, ways my church is using it. Tell us a little bit about you and your story, because you do this. You also work on staff at a church, and so you're using it. It's kind of like a solution to your own problem kind of thing. So tell us about you and your, your church. Yeah, absolutely. I'm at Cedar Ridge Christian Church and um, have been there for about 10 years always wanted a solution um, that I could use and realized I was not going to be able to afford a solution. And so kind of went on the path of making my own. Um, and through a lot of uh, uh, trial and error, finally, I came up with a solution that, man, I, I, I really love. And it's helping me out in my ministry a ton. Yeah. And we, at any point, if people want to check it out, you know, we're an affiliate for it. They don't even have to use our affiliate link if they, if they don't want to, but if you do, you can find that link in the description or in the show notes, depending on where you're listening to this or watching this online, but it's called sign presenter and it runs on Amazon fire stick. I think that's my favorite part. You know, I always thought if there's a good solution for digital signage, I didn't want what is out there for a lot of, um, solutions which is huge and it's this massive thing and you got to get basically a little computer that attaches to every screen or or you got to wire up your whole building you know a certain way and that is probably okay for i don't know like hotels with 500 tvs or i don't know whatever you know some of these just massive scale solutions but once you get into something that needs 20 screens 30 screens three screens you know what i mean i always thought there's got to be something on one of these you know new devices like Chrome stick or Roku or Amazon fire stick or whatever. So it runs on Amazon fire stick. Give us like an overview of just how it works. And then I'm going to talk about different uses for it. And then we'll jump into like how to use it. Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, it runs on the Amazon fire stick and basically it is just an app. Um, you'd get it right through the Amazon store there. You don't have to hack your Amazon stick or anything. Um, it's uh, very easy. You go um, to signpresenter.com, you log in and you put everything that you need um, uh, on your screen. And then the same thing, when you go on your app, you log in and it ties those two together. And so uh, basically whatever you want to put on your screen, you just do that from your office or your house or anywhere in the world. And it shows up uh, on the screen that you want it to. Yep, and we're using this in my church. Uh, you probably know more than I do, but I, f I feel like we have like 20 screens or something set up. And there's been times when like somebody on staff will text me because they know I know how to use it from our connection. And like, hey, I set this up. Uh, I don't know if it's right and we need it for tonight. Can you check? And I do love the fact that I'm just like, yep, right here, you know, on my computer from wherever I am. And, you know, I hit the preview button. It's like, yep, you're good to go. You're all set. So that's awesome. But let's talk a little bit about the different uses because digital signage probably makes people think of different things. And we in our church use it at least three different ways that I can think of. But what are some different ways people could use this, uh, not just digital signage, but what, what are all the ways they could use it in their church or organization? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in our church, we kind of start out obviously in the children's area and we do it outside of our classrooms. And then we also do it in the hallway. So I have a vertical screen when people walk in, they're able to see announcements like when is camp, what signups are going to happen. And it really does make a difference. Our, we started to see our parents actually signing up more because they just knew what was happening. And then in the classrooms, because you can change for the times, um, basically uh, we have it set up like above the kindergarten classroom and it says kindergarten. And so everybody knows this is a kindergarten classroom. They go in there. And then when parents come and pick up, it's actually showing everything that they learn, their memory verse, the main point um, and, and the theme for that, that month. And so they can ask their, their kids on in the car ride home, what's going on. So we use it informationally there uh, at the church. We're also using it in the main area on our mission walls. And basically we have uh, pictures all the time from missionaries and things that they upload. And so they're able to see um, what's going on in the field. Our people are just there locally, uh, which is really cool. Um, we're also using it on our live stream. And so we, uh, we plug it right into the computer through a USB um, adapter, and then it runs all of our uh, pre-show for our main service. And then when it's time, it runs the countdown. Of course, this is all automatic. And so nobody ever forgets to hit ProPresenter where uh, <laughs> that countdown goes. 
And then, of course, the last, um, which actually Nick had a big part in, uh, which was getting in the classroom and running curriculum, uh, something that I didn't even think of or I thought of, but uh, it took a while to get there and, and we got there. And so we uh, I have three campuses at our church and we took out 11 uh, pro presenter computers, all iMacs that were running there. And we use all sign presenter now. And my teachers love it uh, because they are not having to work with a computer anymore. They work with an Amazon Fire Stick remote. It's very simple to use. Yeah, and if you're and you're running more than we were running, but if you're running eleven pro presenter installs on computers, I mean that's like fifteen grand. Not you know not counting the yearly subscription <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Now we will still use pro presenter. I love that solution for a like a live produced environment with like lots of elements. But like in preschool, all our preschool rooms. You know, we're not doing that and you're replacing it with like a fire stick that's 20, 30, maybe 40 bucks, you know, something like that. Yeah. And then $10 a month per screen for a solution like this, like, you know, you're saving a lot of money. But the other thing that I think is great about it for that, for curriculum, for anything that's like replacing a PowerPoint or pro presenter, I don't even know what else is out these days, but, you know, easy worship and all these other programs that do that is I just think ease of use. You know what I mean? Like, I love the power of pro presenter, but I love the simplicity of sign presenter, you know, cause like in our preschool <laughs> yeah. leaders rooms, it's like, and there's even other benefits too. Like for instance, because it runs on Amazon fire stick, we can play our music through that in a preschool room at the same time. I, I didn't know this happened. You obviously, you probably knew this worked for me. I discovered by accident that we could have that music playing behind whatever image we have up in sign presenter. And you know, they could both be like that. And then when we go play something like a video with some audio, well then, yeah, then it's just going to, play that from sign presenter which is really cool but it's i mean it's like it's like running powerpoint from remote almost you know just click in here go to the next one go to the next one or you can do it on a schedule which i just i think is awesome so i even love it for digital signage um i mean gosh in our preteen environment we have kind of a separate lobby because it's it's a different office space that we lease and literally we haven't even like upgraded, so to speak, to where we're showing different slides or different things that are coming up. It's just the logo. But the look, when you come in of two sharp TVs, and we're using TCL TVs, you know, really cheap, yeah. uh, but, but look good enough. Um, with that logo, so much better than even a banner, or certainly anything else. I have a pet peeve that I'm going to say right here that might make some people mad. Um, if you have this, Michael, I cannot stand <laughs> taped signs to anything like when people tape signs on walls or on windows or like if you're at the doctor's office and there's like 43 papers oh, on the wall. oh it's just great so me <laughs> and um in fact and it's a joke in our staff because people know i have that so like if a volunteer you know gets an idea of like taping something up our staff knows oh Ooh, if Nick sees that, like that's coming down <laughs> and anyway digital signage just to replace that kind of thing is great. So I let, we use it for all those things, but let's, let's talk about how it works practically. So if somebody's thinking, yeah, I might want to use this. Um, let's dive in. You can share your screen a little bit, show us like sure. behind the scenes of how sign presenter works. Absolutely. Let's do it. Show my screen real quick. And the other plus too, of running on fire stick is if you want, you can also watch Netflix or Amazon prime or whatever, because it runs <laughs> other things too, which is great. Yeah. That's my right. lobby right there. So there's the, uh, the uh, the pic the screen we have and I just love that look we got that banner there for my church and it looks good too but man those screens and there's another one you can't see in this picture is kind of behind the wall there that look really good yeah that's our lobby uh, the the next picture down there so two TVs yeah. there that's two of the five I think we got five total in the lobby and you can see there we're running different things it's really the same playlist but we you know get them started separately so they actually don't show the same thing at the same time. So it's a nice rotation. Okay. Cool. Good. Yeah. Um, so if you wanted to try it out, it's absolutely free uh, to try out. And a lot of people, you know, when you say free sometimes and you just go right in here and click log in and you're going to log right in. And when when I say free, I mean, it is free for 14 days. You do have to put your credit card in, um, but just remember to take it out after the 14 days if you don't want to use it. But this part right here, your messages and your playlist, 
you can build this up as much as you want to. And the account is always there. And that's 100% free all the time. It's just when you actually go to put it on a screen that um, it, it costs something. So let's just go through uh, what it looks like. You saw me log in. This is exactly what it looks like. And then there's a video right there that will show you kind of how to make your first one. But um, there's three steps. It's one, two, and three. The messages, you got to put them in playlist and then put them on the screen. And so um, in the messages, you just choose which one you want, horizontal or vertical. And then you have all these different types of messages, um, which you can get into uh, a little bit later. But let's, yeah, let's just go with let's, like the... Let's, let's just define it real quick, though, because yeah. I think that's what's helpful is for people to know. I think they know what a playlist is. You know, we all have you know, Spotify or something, you've listened to a music play. It's just a list of media. We know what the screens are. Messages is basically a generic term for whatever you're going to put on the screen. could be a picture, right. could be a video, right? could be audio only. Could Yeah. So, and that's what all these things are here. Um, yes. could be a feed, like you have weather, right? Isn't that an option? You yeah, have the weather, absolutely. Which we, is cool. we try to make it to where you can put whatever you want to on your screen. And so images, videos, anything, uh, any website that you wanted to put on there um, and even live video. So you can click on the live video and uh, put your own church's live video in. OK, yep. um, and then down here actually is uh, a feature that we call feeds. This is big, big worship. Um, and so it's a subscription. It's four dollars and thirty three cents a month. But if you subscribe to that, there is, I think, one hundred and forty and they keep adding more worship songs, uh, countdowns and everything that will automatically show up in your playlist. So you can use those and I'll go over using those when we get there. Um, but to, to, if you want to add a image, you just go in here. And the category is right here in category. All that means is folder. And so information would be at a category and whatever you wanted to make the category, you just put that in there right there. And then yeah, we do a lot of ministry. A lot of times our categories like the ministry or the event or whatever. Yeah. yeah. If you don't use a category, it'll just go into uncategorized and then you'll have a huge list of, um, messages that don't really go anywhere. So I, I encourage people to start using them right away. Um, but anyway, and so whatever you want to name it, you just name it. And it's really as simple as just go into uh, whatever image you want. I just clicked upload, click open. Once it's there, you can hit update or you can just hit save. And it's up, it's ready, right? There it's it ready to go. Yep. And so that's adding a image. Let's, uh, let's add a quick video is the same way. So this is our video. Video with we'll audio, which there's the option of having video, no audio too, right? Correct. This is video with audio. And we'll just make this new message number two. And let's go here I think I've got a video but that one isn't too long um, so now that video is uploading and it does take a second for it to upload and so you're going to want to basically once you upload a video if you're uploading a 30 minute video it's going to take a while um, but if you're uploading a five minute video it's going to take less right down here it shows you how far you've uploaded it said we're at 53 percent and yep. so you just kind of have to hang on and wait. And what it will do is it'll actually say processing once it, once it has it uploaded. One thing I will note is right here, the duration in seconds, um, this doesn't count for video. There it is right there. And so it's processing that video. This 30 seconds, it's, um, it, it is for images and things like that. We just haven't gotten it taken out of there, but that video, no matter what size it is, it'll play the full length of the video. Yeah. And not beyond that. It's not like it keeps going or whatever at the end. And we've uploaded, exactly. I mean, gosh, we've uploaded 30 second videos, 30 minute videos, but we have uploaded a number of 30 minute videos. So, you know, it does take longer, like it does to upload anything It's 30 minutes and then it takes longer to process. Yes. But again, it's still, I mean, it's all just something you have to be prepared for. What you don't want to do probably is, Oh, I need that 30 minute video uploaded to show it in five minutes. Like you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> right. Know, but 
but you could with a short video, you know, like you, you definitely could. And, and I've done that before, but the reason that it takes a while for it to process is basically we're compressing it in a certain format so that it plays great on the fire stick and looks great on the fire stick. And so yeah. it, that just takes the server a little bit of time to do, but and so that's, as I'll throw yeah. in here too. Part of it is that's what makes it uh, portable. Cause I know one of the questions that come up is okay. I'm in a portable setting or, or whatever. Like I don't have Wi-Fi. And we've tested this and you know this, that if you can just have connection for it to update once and get the new content, like say you updated something on a Thursday and you're in a portable church and you set up on Sunday morning, you do need Wi-Fi just for it to connect. You could have connected it Thursday or connect it Sunday yeah. just to get that new update and download that new content that this right here. And then, then it's good to go. Like you could not yeah. have the internet the rest of the morning and it's fine. It's all on the fire stick in place. Absolutely. Uh, and so those are just a couple of the um, messages that you can put on. It's fun to kind of explore through here. Um, a lot of people just end on the simple video and image, but there's a lot more. And, and some of those I've uploaded here, um, for instance, the live feed, the planning center. I wanted to show that. So planning center has an option. I don't know if, uh, how many people use planning center, but they have an option to basically have a uh, screen that will show every event that's going on and it's just a URL. And so we just use the uh, show website, put that URL in and now it's connected to planning center and whatever um, event that's coming on, you can have that list in your church, which is kind of cool. Uh, local weather. Yeah. You just put your weather in. You can change your zip code to whatever you want it and um, and put it in there. One thing that we offer is um, basically the ability to make your own slides inside of uh, Sign Presenter, which some people use and some people don't. Uh, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you probably want to use that and then upload those. But if you just want to make something quick, like this is a birthday list. It's a template that we have. You can simply just jump in here and... Um, change anything that you want in there. So it says July birthdays instead of July, you know, let's just make it June. And then you just uh, hit save. And update their names. So, yeah, that's that's fast and quick. Yeah. We pretty much use, we pretty much upload things that are done, you know, that made in Photoshop, yeah. made in Canva videos. Uh, we haven't edited that, but it's a nice feature, especially for a quick edit. Yeah. I, I've noticed sometimes like uh, on a Sunday morning, I'm sitting out. Oh, I forgot to make that sign. I've used this just to make a quick, hey, make sure to sign up for camp and put the website on there. Um, been very helpful. Mm -hmm. And so if you need fast things, um, it, it's the way to go. And that's just called the designer. You can start from scratch on that, which is uh, right. Yeah, I saw that at the top. You're the third yep. one. Right there. Yeah. And the way that these work is whatever's being used the most shows up. And so across the board, whoever's using that the most. So that's, me that's messages. Do you, anything I'm missing on messages, Nick? No, I don't think so. I think if, again, we upload our messages, we do, we do use categories for it's mostly by ministry, but there might be even like an event or something else attached to that. Um, but you know, the, the word messages just means content, video, audio, right whatever you know that's good yeah let's let's talk playlists okay so the next step is playlist um and so again if you have a vertical screen you're going to want to use everything vertical horizontal everything 16 by 9 and the program will help you out in that because uh, it won't let you put a 16 by 9 uh playlist on a 9 by 16. so you just go right here we're going to create a new playlist and inside this playlist are all the folders that we have. Now I have different feeds that are in here. That's why you're seeing all that big, big worship. And so there's a lot of videos in there, but this test is what we used right there. And so these are the videos. It's not quite done processing yet, but we'll just put that in there. And then you just name your playlist. We'll just name it new playlist one right here. Um, you have the play order. And so random or sequential, basically if you're using it for a lesson, you probably want it sequential. But if you're using it for digital signage, you might just want it to, to roll random. Um, and it's real easy to add more and more stuff. Like over here, yeah, I'm you're just, just clicking on them. You just click on them once they pop in over here. That's it. You can yeah. rearrange them, right? If you are doing Absolutely. sequential. Yeah, and you care about the order, you can rearrange them. 
It, yep, it's all kind of drag and drop. And then if you don't want them, you just click the remove button and they go back. If you kind of want to see something um, before you do it, you just click the preview and it shows you uh, whatever video is there. Yeah, so what it, what it would look like on the screen, which is great. Oh, but yeah, and then hit save. Your playlists are going to show up over here. So I've actually uh, made a playlist, a digital signage playlist, which is right here, um, which will I'll show you that in screens. And then uh, I also made a kids on the move weekly lesson, seeds weekly lesson. And so um, what's cool about this playlist is some of this stuff in here updates automatically weekly. And so, um, and I'm just using kids on the move for a, an example of, of curriculum here, but anything that says updated weekly, that means that that list updates weekly. And so like, you don't have to, uh, like, I don't have to do it to update weekly. It, you take care exactly. of it. Exactly. Sure yeah. yeah, we take care of it. And so uh, the main point, uh, a lot of lessons have main points that is going to update every week and be the correct main point. And you can see right there, it says signage. And that one is uh, basically 15 seconds. And then there's one in here that is 3,600 seconds. Uh, that's the main point and it's called lesson. And the reason it's 3,600 seconds, if you're using it in a lesson, um, you want to click on that and then just have it sit there while you talk about the main point. And then when you click over, it'll be uh, the correct, you know, go to the correct one, which would be our worship song there. And then Big Big Worship also, they have a weekly feed, um, which is right here, so, updated so weekly. They pick different songs that you could. So again, you could just use exactly. what they pick if you want. You don't even have to make a decision about what. <laughs> exactly. They put their own worship uh, songs in there. They've got some fun uh, pregame videos that they put in. Um, I use it for, in our class, just uh, rolling content that goes through. And I use the weekly because that way it stays fresh every week and there's something different. Um, and a lot of the stuff that they have is, is really good. And so that's that's what weekly means anything that you see weekly or monthly you can know that that's going to update automatically which will come in pretty handy when we get over to screens so anything else on playlist nope i do i would say a tip that i have found to be helpful with messages and with playlists is just coming up with some kind of good naming convention because if you name like for example if you upload a message and you call it um something like you know well, let's say the event is called upgrade and you call yeah. it upgrade and then you make it a playlist called upgrade you know what i mean and then you call your screen <laughs> upgrade like it just gets really confusing because <laughs> yeah. it's like the same word means a bunch of different things so either name yeah. them different things or put something in the front end that lets you know it's different uh because right. the system always knows it's different but you may not know it's different so that's a tip it, i've found to be helpful yeah exactly right and um the more that i've used this i mean i'm I'm extreme case for sure. I think we're up to like 47 screens. And uh, so we have playlists that will go to 11 screens. And so we make uh -huh. one playlist that goes out to all of them. That means whenever I change that one, it changes 11 like that. And awesome. uh, yeah. the weekly changes. And so we also now because of um, COVID-19, we have a lot of families that are still at home. And so we are actually uh, piping that into their house and that playlist change changes on their fire sticks too. And so um, they're getting the cool. same, same curriculum that comes in if they were having a teacher teach them. Okay, so let's get over to screens. So I've made uh, just some example screens and right here, when you add a new screen, um, you just click, I mean, if you need a new screen for your building, you simply just add a new screen and you name it whatever you want. Uh, you don't have to call or do anything like that. It's it's ready to go to, um, and every screen is ten dollars a month. So so remember that when adding them. Um, okay, so screen number one is inside the classroom, and I started having to, to do this, Nick. I don't know about you, but I labeled them so I know which ones are inside classroom, which ones are outside the classroom. Um, I do that. I don't have that. I want screens on the outside of my classroom vertically like you're talking about i think that's an awesome look uh but i do what you're talking about which is i name them based on where they are so it's like right lobby left lobby right welcome center left welcome center right you know what i mean like room 103 yep. you know that kind of thing 
Yeah, if you just start naming screens one, two, three, and four, it gets really confusing oh, yeah. really quick. Yeah, don't do that. Um, yeah. Don't do that. And so right here, I've named this one screen inside. And so this is running curriculum, but you'll notice that I'm actually using digital signage. Um, and the reason is because with digital signage, uh, everything advances automatically. So my video, after it's done, it will go to the next slide. And like I showed you, my lesson slides are 3,600 seconds. And so it automatically goes. And I found that when doing, um, using this as curriculum, it's much better to have them go automatically. Then there's no dead space. You just go from one to the other. And so um, that's why we have it set up as digital signage. And I'll show you one that's manual here in a second. But right here, we need to have a schedule. Now I've got it running 24 seven, which is really easy. All I clicked is 24 seven and it puts all that schedule in for me but it's also easy um, just to make a new schedule if i just want it to run on sunday i just go sunday put my time from when to when in and then hit save and i'm done and so it's pretty self-explanatory on how to do the schedules yeah and you can have like at the bottom here you've got that and i only do this i've never used this feature but you can have multiple playlists on a screen. One place half the time, one place half the time, one place 70%, one place 30. Right. Yes. I have not never done that, but you can see at the bottom here, kids on the move weekly lessons, a hundred percent of the time. Right. And the, the reason for that was really set up for digital signage. So if you wanted to run your announcements, you know, 25% of the time, and then you want to run the main point 25% of the time, um, and you could put it that way when using for curriculum, you usually go a hundred percent when using for digital signage, you can kind of split it up a little bit. Um, but that's, it's really easy to do to add another one. Like if I wanted, uh, the playlist, let's say big, big worship in there and I wanted to run, uh, 25%, I just click add. Yep. Back the one down to 75, you I guess. Back yeah. this guy down and then yep. move that one down, move that Turn one up. That up. Yeah. Yep. Which I would do that if, because I would rather do that if, especially if I had multiple content on the screen of different categories, kind of like you said, I want the bottom line to show, but I also want announcements. Well, I don't want to put the bottom line in with announcements and have to change that every week on every place. Right. You know, I'd rather just change it in one place, but then it shows. But for now, I know we do a hundred percent on everything. We're just playing that one playlist, whatever it is. Now yep. we play the same playlist on multiple screens, but you know, we don't mix them up so yeah. far. Cool. Yeah. And what I have on my in my classes is I have a schedule that goes from six o'clock in the morning to eight forty five, which is just my pregame, just a roll of pregame. And then at eight forty five, it starts my classroom. And so that starts the lesson um, and you can get pretty complicated in it. The good thing that um, <laughs> If you set it up once for your classroom, usually your class is going to start the same time. If your church is like my church, uh, most of the time we start the same time every week. And so you can set that up. It takes a little bit to set it up, but then it's it's worth it in the long run for sure. And so both of these I have on digital signage, but right here, screen number three, I have on both. And so if uh, I wanted to, I could add another manual playlist and you just go into whatever playlist you want and you click add and when we get over to the screen I'll, I'll show you what that that looks like on the screen um when you yeah, have digital a, signage just to help people digital signage is like it's digital signage it's going to run on its own you've already preset it yeah you've got your playlist you've got your schedule it just runs manual is more like powerpoint pro presenter like you're going to control it yes you know i'm going to hit next i'm going to hit next and then I'll, actually most of ours are slide on both because even if they are primarily digital signage, mm -hmm. we want to be able to every now and then use it with them. Absolutely. Uh, and it's you know, really we, easy to do that with the remote. What we learned is making it digital signage makes it a lot easier because there's one button to hit and then it's off and run. And I'll show you how we do that right here. So what I have is basically um, an Amazon Fire Stick hooked up to a USB device that's going into my computer. So this screen that I just pulled over is basically my TV. And I'm just using the Amazon Fire Stick remote. If I ever say hamburger, I mean the one with the three lines right there. I call that the hamburger. And yeah. so um, here's that playlist that we made. And it's run on digital signage. So as soon as I plug the screen in, um, it's running. And even though it's digital signage, you can still use 
the right button, just like you would with any uh, Amazon application. You just move right over to the right one. Also pause and play work the same way. So this is a 3600 second slide. So it's going to stay there for an hour or if I push the next button, it'll go to the next video. And so video is playing here. All right, we're done with that video and you just keep going through. Uh, these are our rules. We always like to have rules. That's what I look like apparently as my avatar. I don't know. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it makes it really easy. This is actually from Big Big Worship. Um, I said, I, I, and you'll hear me say that a lot because I've met Mark. Uh, he is a great guy. Even if you don't use Sign Presenter, go over to Big Big Worship. Um, it's really affordable to download their stuff and really worth it. But a Sign Presenter and Big Big Worship make a really cool combo for your children's ministry for sure. And you're just hitting, I mean, you're just hitting on the right on that remote just, to go to the next hit. one, to the next one. And you can go back, like if you went too far, right, you can go back. Right. So if I wanted to go back, I could, or if I get out of place and I'm like, um, where am I at? All I got to do is hit the up or down, and that's going to give me every, you every slide. The list. Yep, you can just yep. pick it. And now I can just jump right over to that slide and, that's great. and go. So... Uh, we we'll just try to make it super simple to use. So I'm going to get out of this and you see it's run schedule. So it goes right into running the schedule again. Um, and there's no need to pick TV or anything, which is what I like for my teachers. But if I really want to get out of this and switch it to another screen, I just have to uh, do three times really fast to get to my screens. And now, or, or the first time you set it up, you get this, right? Like when you first set up your it, fire it, stick, you have to pick the screen. Which screen that's exactly get. right. Sorry. And the first time you do set it up, it will be like this. And you can see here, these are the same screens. So the account is uh, connected correctly because um, you'll see exactly the screens that you made. And then uh, I think it was screen four that we had some and manual playlists. That's a good tip for people in. too. Whoops. That's a good tip. That's a good tip for people too. Is like I create the screen in Sign Presenter first, then I go install it on the Amazon Fire Stick right. and choose which screen because you have to be able to choose which screen it is. So you need to make it in Sign Presenter first. Yes, you don't have yeah. to, but it just helps. It helps you to do yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look, I don't know if you can see that on the video, but right up here it says cached items fifty nine out of fifty nine, and. Yeah. This is a brand new feature that we added for our friend Kenny. Um, he has been uh, using Sign Presenter. One of his locations is completely offline. And so what he does is he makes a manual playlist and then he would go through and make sure they were all playing. And so now all he has to do is go in and see, okay, 59 out of 59 videos, we're good to go. And you take that out, you know for sure every video is cached, we're ready to go. Yeah, that's good. So, that so he doesn't have to test them the way he used to. He can just see right there that it's updated. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, actually texted me this morning and said, thank you. Save me about an hour every week. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. So, we, yeah. Kenny likes saving time and so do I. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Cool. That's why this whole thing was built. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, the screen view. It really is this simple um, once you get on a classroom, I really like this feature of it because I'm having to do this every once in a while. We have to combine classes or something goes on where a teacher doesn't show up. No problem. I can go into any of my classrooms that has sign presenter and pull up whichever screen I need it to be that day. So if I want to move my third and fifth grade in with my to my first and second grade classroom, it takes me one second to, to get to this and they're off and going. That's great. Cool. Well, that's a good demo. And of course, this is all mostly the behind the scenes. People got to see what it looks like on the front end, like, you know, for the TV. And, and there are some pictures, like we saw earlier, some of those pictures from my church. We've set up more since then. So I'll probably have more pictures here soon. Uh, Kenny has been setting it up. And a lot of our friends are using it. And you can see what it looks like in their church. Yeah. So now we're looking at the settings. So, yeah, this is a settings. I, I sometimes forget to to mention this, but um, these are the departments and the user access. So 
in a case that you have a couple of campuses or even a you know different ministries you can set up as many departments as you want and basically it just gives them their own account and so you just make a, a new um, department and then add a email and then um, just send them an email that basically says hey log into your new sign presenter account and then it's totally separate from yours does that make sense yep when we do that we have we have at least five staff on our account yeah. Uh, which is great because my student pastor can do it for student ministry and children's ministry team. They each have logins and our, our guest services team who primarily runs the TVs that are in the lobby. So Absolutely. yeah, we definitely like having multiple user accounts. And then the last thing is support. Um, so support is uh, me and my wife. And if you have a problem, uh, you can go right here. You can call me directly if you want to, but you can go right here and click new support ticket and, uh, we will get uh, to you really quick. Our support is very fast. And um, under here is a bunch of uh, support items that have come up in the past that we think are helpful. And most of them have videos in them. So you can go and kind of see, um, you know, different ways. Like if you want to use Sign Presenter on a uh, different speaker system, you can, there's a way to do that. And we have all these support things here. So a lot of people forget supports right there. Um, and we're always willing, ready to help. Cool. Any last things we should show in the demo or is that, is that good? Billings there. People can see that. It's great. Yeah. yeah this is the site where you sign up. Nothing like a cheeseburger on your, uh, you know, on the, <laughs> on the slide there to make me hungry. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. See, that's, yeah, that's a picture of my lobby right there. And we had, you know, using two, that's two of the screens of the five that are in our lobby uh, set up there, which is nice. Yeah. I, I love to uh, hear different use cases too. So uh, if you're using it for something completely separate, let us know. So that's how I got that, that planning center one. Someone was like, Oh yeah. Do you know this connects to planning center? I was like, no, I had no idea. That's awesome. That's great. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so. Be able to feed in different things to it. I can't go in a place now that has digital signage or needs digital signage and not think what is running that you need this. You know what I mean? Like I've, been, <laughs> I've picked up food in places and think this is terrible. Let me give you a better solution. <laughs> Even though it's not church, yes. you know, it's a business. Um, yeah. Or, you know, it's again, like things signed, bad signs, things taped on halls or whatever and think, yeah, you need this right here. Cause it's so easy. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, thanks for walking us through the behind the scenes of it, how it works. Like you said, it's 10 bucks a month per screen, um, a fire stick. There's different brands of fire sticks. Some TVs have it built in, which is great. So maybe we'll link some of those as well. But uh, the new version of the fire stick, is it 20 or $30? It's pretty cheap, right? Yeah. If you, uh, if you keep your eye out, Amazon takes them down to like 18 bucks a piece. Um, I've saw, seen them as low as 16 with a, like a rebate thing. Um, but 22 to 28 dollars is where they sit most of the time so yeah and they have other ones that are you know they do more and they have right. more storage or 4k or whatever it does have to be a 4k one I believe that's correct is that right no it doesn't anymore and so it, it can anymore. be the okay, amazon fire stick light which is not gotcha. 4k um, okay but it cool. has the bigger processor like the 4k did so gotcha cool yeah and so people can get that it's nice and cheap because a lot of the thing that i realized was this was such an industry thing, you know, especially for churches. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of great solutions for churches yeah. and, you know, in the industry, it's like buy either a computer that runs this software or a couple hundred bucks for this media player. Plus yeah. it's $20 a screen minimum. Like that was like kind of like a standard industry thing. So you've got a, you've got a good thing going here and, you know, we put it all throughout my church. So people can check out the link in the description, the show notes, depending on where you're watching or listening to this. And like you said, they can, browse the website there, reach out to you if they have any questions, if they need help Absolutely. getting yeah. set up. Um, if, you, if you need your curriculum, you know, set up, or in some cases, we're able to automatically update your curriculum for you. Just give us a call and tell us what you're using and we'll see what we can do. Cool. Thanks, Michael, for sharing, for creating this, solving this problem. Yeah. So glad you did, because I've been yeah. for years thinking we need something better for this. And as opposed to, because I bet you people watching this did what we did for years too, which is either hook up a computer for a presenter. Um, in fact, one of our old Macs uh, used to run, uh, it wasn't pro presenter. It was whatever they use to do multiple screens. And I mean, you're talking about $1,500 oh, minimum. Yeah. Pro you know video I mean? player. Pro yeah. video player. And you're talking about $1,500 minimum yeah. 
for the simple thing, or we're on the other end of it, taking a USB stick and every time plugging it in and sharing files and plugging it back in the computer, hoping it does the right resolution. It's just a disaster. So did that for years. (laughs) I'm glad you created this instead. It's a lot easier. So thanks for doing that and for taking time to share with us. Absolutely. Thank you.